Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well and thank you very much for tuning in. This is the third in our Aerosoft CRJ tutorial series following volume three of the documentation supplied with the add-on. In this video, we are going to run our before start checklists and initialize and set up the FMS with our flight plan and performance data. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so it is looking a bit dim here in the cockpit so I'm just going to get a little bit of lighting going on. This is purely preference um, but I thought I would just show it as it's not really touched on in the tutorial and it's, it's quite a simple thing and there's some really nice lighting effects in this cockpit. So you have lighting control switches on both sides for the captain and first officer. We'll just turn the integral lights up and the flood lights as well. We'll turn the floor light on as well, which is quite a nice one. Jump over to the first officer side and do the same thing. Then on the pedestal here, we can turn on the integral lights here as well. And we could turn up the flood lights, which is actually turning up this light right here. Which is quite nice. You can also adjust the display brightness here as well, uh, but we're going to leave that for now. Okay, so looking much better now. Let's jump over to the EFB here. We'll open the aircraft page and as we're about to start getting ready to start the engines, let's now close the cargo doors and the service door. We'll also close the passenger door. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the captain and crew, welcome aboard this flight. We hope you enjoy flying with us. Okay. And the cabin crew are going to make their announcements as we discovered in the first episode. You can turn these on and off if you wish. It's entirely up to you. We'll have flight deck noises on. That's... Uh, gone off in between episodes as we obviously are recording these on separate occasions. Make sure the cabin lights are nice and bright for the passengers. Okay, so we are just going to run our before start checklist. Before start checklist on the EFB here for your reference. So we're going to first turn the passenger signs on. We'll check our landing elevation is set, which it is. We did that in the last episode in our originating checks. We'll turn the bo boost pumps on now, the fuel boost pumps. And you'll note in the manual, you want to just monitor the fuel quantity for about 10 minutes. Uh, you can actually do this by opening the fuel page on the ICAS. And you just want to have a look on here and check that the center tank fuel quantity doesn't increase by over 68 kilograms. Okay, and then we'll just double check our altimeters are set, which they are, we set that in our last episode in the originating checks. And then next of all, we are gonna start setting up the FMS. Okay, so when you first arrive at the FMS, it should be on the status page, which is where it would usually begin when the aircraft is powered on. We basically just want to just check the status page to begin with. So we'll just check the nav database that is installed. This is okay for us. We'll check the active database 
validity, so it's actually active between the 25th of February and the 24th of March. The cycle is 2-1, so that is current and active. So that's okay. Secondary database is looking out of date, but we don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, the time itself is 9.06. You can cross check this if you wish and just make sure everything is okay. Date is the 5th of February as we set up in the beginning. And this code at the bottom here is not relevant for us here in flight simulation, but it is the software part number of the installed software in the FMCs. Okay. So now let's initialize the position so the FMS knows where we are. We'll click on pause in it using this bottom right line selection key. And this brings up the pause in it page. Here you'll see a few details. You'll see the FMS position in the latitude and longitude. And an option to input the current airport we're at. The pilot, pilot forward slash reference waypoint that we could also use to initialize our position. And we could also use the gate number as well to set our position. So just for completeness, we can in input Echo Delta Lima Papa and put that into the airport field here. That's going to give us the coordinates for Paderborn Airport. However, we don't want to use that because that is the coordinates for the airport. It's not accurate to our specific position on the apron here. So we are going to use our GPS position. We can press next page and see here on the next page our FMS position, our GNSS1 position, GNS, GNSS2 position. These are both basically our GPS receivers and we can see they're all the same. So we have an accurate position here from using the GPS. We're going to select the FMS position by using the top left line selection key, which is going to copy it then into our scratch pad at the bottom. We'll then go back to the first page by pressing previous page. And we will set the position here in the bottom. So now the FMS knows where we are exactly. And everything is good here. Just one thing to note as well is if this is the first time you're using a CDU of this style, you can see in the top right when you have more than one page. As you can see here, we have three pages in total. We just went to the second. There is also a third page here. Where you can see additionally the position that the inertial reference system has uh, determined. Okay, so next we are going to start putting in our flight plan. So we'll press the flight plan button here. And into the origin we want to enter Echo Delta Lima Papa. The ICAO code for Paderborn. We're then going to input our destination, which is Munich today, which is Elk Echo Delta Delta Mike. And we'll stick that in the destination field. You can see then that the distance is shown in nautical miles. We'll also input our alternate for today, which is uh, Stuttgart, which is Echo Delta Delta Sierra. We'll put that in the alternate field. You may have noticed a slight difference here between the lines we can input our data. A dashed line is not necessarily required for the FMS to basically do its thing and uh, operate as normal. However, if there is a section with boxes, that is required. So we need to always input something there. 
But for now, we are going to hit execute. And that's going to save the information we just input into the CDU. Okay, so next up, what we want to do is we want to start inputting our routing. So you'll remember from looking at the first few pages of the tutorial document here, there was our routing listed. It's also routed, it's also listed, sorry, on uh, the next page here. We're next going to input our originating runway, which is 06 in this instance. We're also going to put in our flight number, which is Delta Lima Hotel 2177. And we'll put that in the flight number section here. Then we'll hit the execute button and that's going to then save all of our information that we've input into this section here. Okay, great stuff. So next up, we want to start putting in our routing. We're first going to start with our departure. So we're going to press the departure arrival button and that will bring up the departures page for Paderborn. Because we are currently at Paderborn, by default, it's going to bring up the departure page immediately. And the runway we want is already selected 06. So that is good. We want to choose now a standard instrument departure, a SID. So we are going to go for the Warburg 1X-Ray noted here as Whiskey Romeo Bravo 1X-Ray. So we'll select that and that's now selected and we'll hit execute to insert that into our flight plan. You can see here in the corner of the screen that our flight plan is now starting to take shape on the MFD. We're then going to start inputting our flight plan. So we can easily get to that by hitting the flight plan button here. Or you can hit this one. Doesn't really matter. And we are going to use the next page button to bring up our flight plan. You can see we've already got the Warburg 1 X-ray departure, which takes us out to the Warburg VOR. And we are going to start putting in our routing here. So what you want to think of when you're inputting here is basically the vias on the left hand side here. These are essentially like motorways here in the UK or, you know, freeways elsewhere in the world, whatever you want to call it. And um, these are basically like the roads that you're taking to get to your destination. And then on the right hand side, the actual nav aids or waypoints are essentially the intersections or junctions where you're going to change from one freeway to another. So you'll see on this page in the manual, we do have a reminder of our routing. Obviously, you will have reviewed this on the first few pages, and we are going to input that now. So we are first going to start with our first section, and that's going to take us from the Warburg VOR to the waypoint Dinku, and we are going to go via Uniform Lima 126. And we'll put that here on the left side. So we'll press the second left line selection key and we'll put it into this dashed field here. And then on the right hand side, we need to import where we're going to exit from the airway here. And we're going to exit that at Dinku. The next airway we're going to take is Lima 603. And we are going to exit that at Akanu. We'll stick that on the right hand side there. And that is basically our flight plan complete. We just need to now put in our arrival into Munich. 
One thing I'd just like to mention is you don't always have to use airways. Sometimes you'll be going direct between various different fixes. It just depends on the routing and where you are in the world. Okay, so let's hit execute and save our flight plan. All right, so with regards to the arrival into Munich, this is only a short flight, so we're gonna input it now while we're on the ground. But for maybe a slightly longer flight, or if you're flying using ATC, for example, on VATSIM, then you may not want to input your arrival just yet, as that could change, obviously, while you're up in the air. So we're gonna hit the departure and arrival button again twice. That's gonna take us to the departure arrival index page and we're gonna hit Munich arrival. The arrival we want to use today is the Akanu 3 Alpha arrival. So that's listed here on the left hand side. We'll select that. And we want to find our final approach. So we're going to use runway A left here and we're going to use the ILS. So we'll select ILS 08 left. And we are not going to use a transition today. So we'll just select vectors for this tutorial. We'll then hit execute and then that is now saved in our FMS. All right, so now let's check the legs page and just make sure everything is there. Checking through each individual page and making sure everything looks okay. And we have one thing here that we need to take care of. We have a discontinuity. So this is basically where part of a flight plan is not exactly meeting the next part. And uh, we have to clear that out before we can fly. Now you can see in this instance, we've got two Akanu waypoints. This is basically taking us from our final waypoint Akanu on to the arrival. And to clear that off, it is really quite simple. We're just going to hit the line selection key here next to Loopbox, which will copy that waypoint into our scratch pad. And then we're just going to bring that up and put it over the discontinuity and as you can see that disappears and we now have a nice clean uh, leg for this section of the route. Okay and we now shall hit execute to make sure that's saved. We'll go to the next page and you can see here we have another discontinuity. Now looking at the actual documentation itself for whatever reason, this discontinuity doesn't show up on there. However, this has appeared every time for me. So we can take care of a couple of steps in one go here. So essentially, as part of the tutorial, we want to actually get rid of this VOR here, the Mike India Quebec VOR. And we want to basically just go straight from Rockhill to Delta Mike 431. We also have the discontinuity to get rid of. So we can actually just do that in one swoop here. So we'll select Delta Mike 431. I'll copy it into our scratch pad and we're just gonna drop that over the MIQ VOR. And then just reviewing what we've just done before we hit execute. If we go to the previous page, you can see we have Roadkill and then Delta Mike 431 which is what we wanted. So that's perfect. We'll hit execute and that is now all saved. Let's just take a quick look at our altitude constraints for our arrival. At Renlo, we have a constraint of flight level 130 and below. So we need to be below 13,000 feet at passing Renlo. So we're going to leave that there. That's part of the arrival. If you double check that against the chart, you'll see that uh, restriction is also on there. We're not going to refer to the chart for this tutorial, um, but we shall just go with the FMS data to keep things simple. 
and further just to make this arrival a little bit more simple and straightforward for us we are going to enter another restriction in here manually into Rockhill and we're going to enter in 8000 feet by hitting forward slash then 8000 and we'll press on the right hand side here next to Rockhill you can see that's now entered in flight level 080 and we're happy with that so let's hit execute okay so let's just make sure the flight plan is drawn correctly on our MFD and that there are no interruptions so we'll switch over this way and make sure we put the format for the map on plan mode like this I like to just zoom it in just a touch just so you can see the waypoints individually just a touch easier don't need to go in super super far 10 or 20 miles should do it and then we're going to go back to our FMS we'll hit MFD advance I just like to hit the two way point to make sure we are centered on our first leg and then we'll just cycle that through using next waypoint and we'll just make sure the route is looking as expected and you'll see here where we edited the, the route from Roquel we're going direct to Delta Mike 431 and then that takes us in to the runway this would be the ILS portion of the route just after Magat Okay, so that is all looking good. We can now switch the map back to the usual format. And that is looking good. Okay, so now we will init our performance figures into the FMS. So first of all, I will just show you this on the CDU itself. If we hit perf, and then perf init, you can see here, everything is basically blanked out. And what you can do is you could go over to our EFB and you could copy down our figures here and copy it over here manually and type these in using the uh, keypad down here. You can do that if you want. However, we can do it much easier than that here in the Aerosoft CRJ and essentially we can go over here and we can hit this copy perf init data to FMS however you'll notice we're still at zero fuel here on the performance page that's obviously something we did earlier as we loaded in the fuel using the fuel loading panel and we do have fuel on board you can see on the ICAS here we have Total fuel 2780, same on this side as well. We've got the fuel page open there. So we do have fuel on board. We just need to let the EFB know we do. So we can use this third button down here. Init fuel from aircraft. And if we click this, that will then bring in our fuel figure here into the calculations. And that is looking much better now. We'll click set payload in simulator, just make sure everything is uh, finalized and set properly. And then we will go copy perf init data to FMS. So clicking that button and going back over here, you'll see now our weights are all calculated and input into this screen. We only need to enter our cruising altitude, which is going to be flight level 180. So we'll enter that. You can enter that either by putting in 18,000 or we can go F180 and that will input there. We're going to have a alternate cruise altitude today of flight level 100. And then we'll hit execute. Okay, so we'll just review, review next the VNAV setup pages. And we want to just check first our transition altitude. In Munich, that is going to be, not Munich, sorry, this is, we're at Paderborn, 
so it's going to be 6,000 feet. The target speed for the climb here is going to be 290 knots or Mach 0.74. That's fine. And we have a speed limit up to the altitude of 10,000 feet of 250 knots, which again is absolutely fine. So we'll hit execute. We'll review the next page. So we've got our cruising speed of 300 knots or Mach 0.74. Our cruising altitude as we just entered is flight level 180. This will be automatically populated in this field once you fill out the perf page. And the final page here for the descent, our target speed, Mach 0.74 and 290. The, again, speed limit up to the altitude of 10,000 feet is 250, that is fine. A transition flight level is going to be flight level 60, we'll leave that as it is here. And our vertical path angle here is going to be 3 degrees. So that is all fine and correct. And this is all set up correctly. Next up, we want to make sure we have the correct nav aids tuned for our departure. Now, refer not referring back to a chart, uh, it's obviously quite difficult to know which nav aids you need. But uh, for this tutorial, we're just going to follow it through as just a few examples of how to use the equipment. And obviously, when you apply this to your own scenarios, you can check the charts and get it all set up how you wish. But for this one, we're just going to follow what's in the manual. So if we head down to our RTU panel here, we are going to first tune the Warburg VOR, which is 113.7, which is actually already set. So that is good. Now, Next up, we want to set the Paderborn VOR. Now, in the tutorial, it does state to tune that into NAV2. However, for the actual departure, you would actually just need this VOR for DME information, for distance information. So we are basically going to tune that into NAV1, but we're going to use the DME hold feature. And I'll show you how to do that now. So we, we still want the 113 decibel 7. So I'm going to just put that into the pre-selector here by hitting this twice. And then we're going to come over here and input the Paderborn DME VOR. And that's going to be 108 50. Now, like I said, we only need the DME information from this one so we're going to just hit this button here which is dme hold that will then put the frequency down here with a h next to it and that's going to indicate then the dme information is held there for that frequency we can then hit the recall button and switch the warburg vor back in to the selected frequency for nav one so if we jump back to our PFD then, we can see we have 0.2 nautical miles with the H. That's indicating this is the DME held distance for the Paderborn VOR. So that's great. And then we'll turn on our bearing here. We'll turn that on for VOR1. And that's going to then point towards the Warburg VOR. As you can see, if we look on our MFD, you can see that clearly points towards Warburg, which is right here. And we are obviously located in the middle. All right, so that is the FMS all set up. And essentially, we have now completed our before start checklist. Looking at the EFB here, we've completed all these items. The only thing left to do is the takeoff briefing. Now, in your own simulations you may be flying with charts so at this point take a look at those and make sure you're familiar with the departure route however in the tutorial no charts are provided for the departure or arrival 
So we're not going to bother with those and we're just going to go with the information we've got here and it should work out fine. I wouldn't worry. I've been through this numerous times and uh, we don't necessarily need chance for these departures. 